Today, I will be reading my very first Stephen King horror novel, and I'll be reading it in a haunted hotel. I will say that something kind of weird happened, and this book is scary. <laughs> Do you hear that? And that it's never happened to me in any other hotel. Getting progressively more intense. We toured room 311 together. The history behind it was so chilling. It's weird. Here we go. <laughs> Hello spooky friends, today is such a fun day because today I actually finally get to take you along with me to my stay in a haunted hotel when I read Stephen King for the very first time. I have wanted to read Stephen King for literally years. Stephen King actually was my grandma's favorite author and so I've always wanted to read Stephen King just to get sort of a taste more for like her favorite reading preferences. And then on top of that, Stephen King also has quite a few movies that my dad really, really loves. However, I have always been way too scared to to read Stephen King or to watch any of his movies until this year. This year, I really wanted to tackle my fear of Stephen King horror books and try to read one just to see if I would like it. And because my favorite motto is go big or go home, I decided to up the stakes a little bit and stay in a haunted hotel. Now, when I was trying to figure out what Stephen King book I wanted to read, I thought of quite a few, but ultimately I decided to read The Shining because it takes place in a haunted hotel as well. Before we go ahead and dive into the vlog, let me tell you a little synopsis for The Shining. So The Shining actually follows three people. They are a family. Jack is the dad, Wendy is the mom, and then Danny is their five-year-old son. And Jack has sort of been down on his luck recently. He was recently let go at his job. He is struggling to stay sober. He ends up getting this opportunity with his family to go and stay in this hotel, which is gonna be closed for the winter time because it gets so snowy that no one can go in and out of any of the passages up to the hotel. It's really a big deal because Jack is essentially committing that he and his family are going to be alone and isolated for potentially up to like four or five months. But he sees this as a really great opportunity. He's trying to write a play, I believe, and he thinks it'll be a great time to work on the play and to get closer to his family. Plus they really need the money. And his son has a very interesting ability where he can see glimpses of what people are thinking or glimpses glimpses of the future. And on the way to the hotel, Danny sees a potential future that he doesn't really like that happens in the hotel. The rest of the book kind of follows the family and their journey and what happens once they are isolated from the world in this hotel. And now that I've told you a little bit about The Shining, let me tell you a little bit about the hotel that I am staying in. So I am staying in the Reed House Hotel in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Reed House opened in 1870 and is considered a Southern icon. Rich in history and beautifully restored, the hotel has a glamorous feel with a 1920s aesthetic and classic pieces throughout for a nod to the past. The Reed Hotel's design feels like stepping into the Great Gatsby and it has an impeccable style from a sparkling bubble chandelier in the rum room to their lobby's gold and antique library. This hotel isn't just famous for their ghosts, it's also famous for its charm and timeless elegance. But also, it's 100% famous for the their ghosts. And ghost hunters and fans of the paranormal actually go to the Reed House specifically to check out room 311 and learn more about their most famous ghost, Annalisa Netherly. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's rewind and go back to day number one when I went to the haunted hotel. Hello friends! I am so excited because I am just about to drive to the haunted hotel. I could not be more <laughs> excited and nervous, okay? Like big emphasis on the nervous, but I think it's gonna be really, really fun. Tonight's also gonna be really cool because my parents and I are going on like a foliage sightseeing sunset cruise and I think there's gonna be live music and the food sounded really really good as well so that'll be like really fun but I figured before we go to the hotel we should stock up on some supplies and by supplies I mean snacks because when I'm really scared and I'm reading I need like Cheetos or something you know what I mean but we're definitely gonna go do that right now pick up some supplies and then go check in to the haunted hotel here we go I love the white cheddar Cheez-Its. They are so good. It kind of feels like we're going on a road trip together. I do actually feel like we should get fruit roll-ups. I don't know why. Yeah, this is literally a road trip. <laughs> okay, you guys, I just got here and my room is so cool. It's so cool. Okay, hold on. So you actually go down this really long corridor and then they kind of like upgraded me. So I'm over in these suites over here and let's go see my room. 
I love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> so the first thing that you see when you come in is this cute little selfie mirror. I think that's so cute. Then look at this gorgeous bathroom. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is so cute. I'm I'm living. And then you have all of these gorgeous like places to sit. So I'll have like little places to read, but this is so cute. You have a little bit of a view here, which is nice. It's a TV. I love the bed. It's a king size bed. It looks so cozy and comfortable. And oh, I'm so happy. Here's another view. There's quite a bit of light in here actually, which I love. And then of course, We've got the shining. Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and settle in and get ready for like a fun night. I'm very happy and it doesn't even feel too spooky right now, although the lobby and stuff feels a little spooky. So, okay. <laughs> things you said just to hurt me I love just went cold but I'm still burning I love just went cold why I keep on making the same mistake I always let you back in hello everyone okay so I just had the most fun my family and I we decided to go on the riverboat cruise it was like a sunset cruise and we had this really yummy charcuterie board it was amazing it was so much fun and now I am a little tired it's not that late though and I think I am going to start the shining by stephen king i also have right here stephen king's memoir which i'm really excited to kind of read a little bit as well it's not too late so i kind of want to go down to the lobby because it is so beautiful there are all of these different little cute nooks to read in there's a library which is so beautiful i want to explore the hotel but i think i want to do that tomorrow tonight because it's so late already i kind of just want to feel cozy and start to read the scary book um I already got into like my sweatshirt and I have like a Stephen King t-shirt on underneath as well. And yeah, I think it's just gonna be kind of fun to go downstairs in the lobby and read a little bit of my book. But it's been such a lovely time so far. I love this hotel. I think it's so beautiful. I'm really excited because tomorrow I'm actually gonna tour room 311, which is like the haunted scary room. Let's go down to the lobby and start this. Also, look at how cute this bookmark is. This is the bookmark I'm gonna be using. Look at that. The Scream Queen Book Club. That is so cute. There's like this I'm like look at how cute that is but yeah i think i'm just gonna go downstairs and find a cute little place to read and start reading stephen king this is why i love october though when else can you stay in a haunted hotel that is beautiful by the way and read a scary book i guess you can do it anytime but it's so much better in october also you guys i don't think i showed you this but look all of the snacks we are ready. We've got Cheeto puffs. We've got salt and vinegar chips. We've got white cheddar cheese oats. We've got hot Cheetos. We've got smart cheddar popcorn. We've got sour punch straws. We've got this party Chex Mix. We've got fruit roll-ups. We've got pumpkin cookies. And then these are from actually the little cruise. We've got moon pies. I also, they gave me two complimentary glasses of champagne. I had a lot of wine tonight. <laughs> So I don't think I'm gonna be having this, but I'm gonna have this probably tomorrow. And this was so incredibly sweet of them. So I'm really excited. All right, let's get to reading. Also my sweatshirt says Sleepy Hollow. Let's go be spooky together. Oh no, anxiety creeps up on me. Is this how it's supposed to feel? Tell me when it's over, I got some place that I gotta be. It won't leave My friends, hey Get out of your comfort zone It's a blessing in disguise Get out of what you call home Your name is written in the sky It might feel just like you're on your own But baby, it's another lie Remember you were me I try to lie. work, work, work But it doesn't work I try to say something It is 
is a lot later. I went down to the lobby. I ordered these really good french fries with like parmesan on them and then a cherry coke. And oh my god, I had the nicest time. <laughs> my waitress was so cool. She was so nice. She was dressed up in a 1920s dress. A lot of people are just dressed for the era because they play like 1920s big band music and everyone is kind of dressed up. Sort of like it's the 1920s and it was just really nice. I ended up staying there for like a couple hours just reading and like snacking on some fries and it was really good. Even though I was there for over an hour, I didn't read that much. I'm on page 40 of The Shining by Stephen King and I do have some thoughts. So, so far, I don't really think this is too scary. I think it's well written. Like it's very engaging. I don't love some of the descriptions of how this poor little boy was hurt. That is hard. To read and it's like sad it's like a really sad book you feel kind of you don't really feel bad for the dad but like the dad's going through it and i think he needs to get some help and obviously you feel really bad for the mom and also for the little boy danny i don't have a ton of thoughts now other than i think i'm really enjoying the writing on this i will say i was starting to fall asleep downstairs in the lobby because i go to sleep usually around nine it's let me tell you the exact time okay the exact time is 10 26 which I feel like probably doesn't sound very late, but if you usually go to bed at nine, it's late. <laughs> it feels so late to me. I do think I'm gonna read a little bit more tonight, but I also think I'm gonna fall asleep pretty soon. So I'm very excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna be touring room 311. I'm going to be having a nice little dinner with my family here and hopefully reading a ton more of this book and then learning more about the hotel's history. And honestly, it's gonna be a really fun time. I'm so excited. Also, I am so tired. So I am ready to go to sleep, read a little bit more, and then I'll update you in the morning. Bye. friends it is uh, i want to say like maybe 8 30 in the morning and i have officially read up to part two of the shining one thing that i'll say about the shining is that i really was not expecting to go into this and think every five seconds wow stephen king's writing is beautiful i don't know why but there's just something about i guess maybe my misconceptions with horror i really thought the only goal was just to scare you the whole time and really what this is doing is building tension in this very beautiful and melancholy way that is really touching one thing that i'm finding is that as i'm reading this i keep highlighting all of these lines that are just so well written there's a lot of tension in this book that's building and I think what Stephen King is doing really 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 well is letting us feel sympathy for our main character who I'm assuming is definitely going to be turning into a villain so we're following three people we're following Danny who is the youngest boy he's five years old and he has kind of like this ability to know things without being told them and he has almost like this invisible friend named Tony I don't know anything about it yet we haven't really like been given a a label as to what this is that he has but it's sort of like a psychic ability to know what his parents are thinking sort of but not like hearing their thoughts more seeing like images and things like that and he's also getting glimpses of the future and the glimpses are one of the things that is making everything so much scarier he's seen all of these different images but we don't know how they fit into the bigger picture yet and everything is fine now but it's sort of like all of this tension is simmering and then jack is danny's father and jack has just lost his job he basically basically became sober because he had a really unfortunate accident. Well, a couple different unfortunate accidents that have really forced him to wake up. One was that he hurt his son while he was drunk, which was really difficult to read. But it's interesting because you know from that incident that he is not a good guy, that we should not be rooting for him. And I feel like that was done very on purpose. Stephen King was saying, listen, you should never hurt a kid. You're not going to like this guy. And since that incident, I have not liked him. But it's interesting because 
because even though I don't like him, I'm seeing all of these events that are leading sort of maybe to his downfall and I feel bad for him. Does that make sense? Like I don't like him as a character. I think he's like despicable after what he did to his kid, but you're really in his head and you're hearing the guilt that he's going through and you're seeing how much he hates himself and how he loves his family. He's just not a good person. It's really well written because you're seeing his perspectives going into this hotel job as well as his wife's perspective. And his wife is very conflicted because she loves her husband, but she also hates her husband because of what he did to their son the year prior to them going to the hotel. And then you see their son who desperately loves their parents and does not want them to separate. And he's willing to do anything to try to keep them together. And there's just this weird hopeful note that you know is going to come crashing down. And it's just well done. Like the suspense and the anticipation is just brilliant. But like, I want to tell you a couple of my favorite lines that I just think are really beautiful. So this one right here, it says, instead of going into the bar where dark shadow sat sampling the tasty waters of oblivion, he had gone to Al's. That's so beautiful. That's so beautifully written. This one I think is my favorite. There's another one, but I can't find it. If I can, I'm going to go back and try to look because there was another line where I was like, Ooh, that's good. But this one is beautiful. So this one is from the wife's perspective and it says together in the darkness floating to sleep. They were like a distant blues tune heard in an almost deserted nightclub, melancholy but pleasing. This is stunning. This is unbelievably beautiful so far. And I think that's the only thing that's kind of helping me get through the book because I'm scared to read this book, but the writing is so good that I'm enjoying the entire thing so far. It's really, really good. So that's my update on The Shining. Last night was so much fun. I ended up going into the lobby. I ordered fries and a cherry Coke. <laughs> it was so fun. I sat down by the fireplace and my waitress was so nice. Her name was Monica and like, we're going to be friends. Like we've exchanged information and stuff. Like we're going to be friends. I think she is so sweet. She is so funny. She is so nice. She also reads. She actually saw that I was reading this and she was like, oh, I love Stephen King. I'm currently finishing it. And I was like, what are the chances? Like, what are the odds? And then she said somebody else came to the hotel a couple nights ago and was also reading Stephen King. And it was also like another girl our age. It was really cool. We were like bonding over scary books and like book clubs in general and stuff and it was just really really nice i will just be honest and say that i was not scared although i I will say that something kind of weird happened. I'll insert like a clip of the sound. My hotel room has a phone and the phone keeps like making a sound just randomly. And it didn't do that when I first came in. It didn't do that when I was like unpacking, but it's been doing that a lot. And last night it woke me up. I fell asleep at like 11 or something like that. And then around two in the morning, my phone just started going off. And I, I thought somebody was calling and I got up and I mean, there was nothing. And so I, I went back to bed. It kept making like this little weird ringing noise. I thought, well, maybe the phone is like dying. Maybe it's like not connected correctly. And so I just took it off and I like put it down because I really wanted to keep sleeping. It hasn't made that noise again until this morning when I was like taking some notes about this and then it was making the noises. Hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's we're, that's good. Let's see if we can not do that. <laughs> I'm sure it was just like a little blip with the phone, but I will say that's never happened in any hotel room that I've ever stayed in. And I've stayed in a lot of hotels and I've traveled a lot and I've never, ever, ever had an issue with a phone just like making random noises. So I do think that is interesting. I'm really excited today because today we are going to be exploring room 311 and learning a little bit more about the history. And I also think parts of today, I'm going to explore a little bit more of the hotel as well. There are so many stories just involved in this particular hotel and it's so beautiful and it's so old but in this like very grand way and it's just like the perfect atmosphere I think to read The Shining in because it's beautiful and dripping with history but also filled with ghost stories. It's like the perfect place to read The Shining. I'm gonna go downstairs and have some breakfast, find some breakfast and then go to a cafe and continue reading The Shining. Let's go.
my loves it is 5 p.m and i am ready to continue on with the shining i had such a nice day after reading a bunch of the shining this morning in the cafe after breakfast my family came down and we toured room 311 together this is annalisa's room and the history behind it was so chilling but also so fascinating and interesting there's a lot of history in the reed hotel and a lot of like memories and stories associated with it and it was just really really interesting to learn all about and i can tell you right now just a little bit of the history and the ghost stories of annalisa and room 311. in 1927 room 311 was rented out to a newlywed couple coming from chicago the bride's name was annalisa netherly annalisa netherly was said to be filled with life and beautiful while staying together at the reed house her husband actually received a call and he had to go back to a very important work project in chicago for just a couple of weeks it didn't fully make sense for her to go back with them because he was going to be there and back really quickly however those couple of weeks actually stretched out to several months and poor annalisa netherly felt abandoned and lonely in her hotel room while her husband was consumed with work back home annalisa started to fall in love with a hotel guest and she started an affair word of this affair was soon caught on by her husband and he rushed back in a rage of jealousy when he came back he flew to 311 and found annalisa with her new love and in a state of jealous rage murdered both of them killing annalisa in the porcelain tub it is said that annalisa still slumbers in her room drifting down to the lobby all dressed up and waiting for the next party still looking as beautiful as the day she was married and capable of stealing anyone's heart and you might just find her in the rum room late at night wearing a beautiful gown sipping a glass of champagne and asking for a dance so i actually think the plan for right now is i'm gonna go downstairs and order some coffee i'm a little bit sleepy but listen i've got one more night here and i want to read a ton more of stephen king so i'm going to be ordering some coffee so that i can stay up a little later i think later tonight i might potentially explore the hotel a little bit more and maybe read in like a couple spooky little nooks and crannies right now my only goal is to get some coffee and to continue reading the shining i am really surprised at how much i'm liking this book now keep in mind i'm only on page 208 and it's spooky like it's chilling the suspense is there okay but also i wasn't expecting to just feel really invested in the story i am so invested in these characters and i feel that it is such an interesting and fascinating story so far it is scary but it's really well done so i'm excited to continue on reading the shining by stephen king at some point i'm probably going to get into my baggy sweatshirt as well just to feel nice and extra cozy although i did change into this very very comfortable and warm cozy sweater because it's really cold <laughs> it's actually getting really really chill it feels very much like we're in the middle of october but yeah i think that's it that's my update gonna go downstairs get some coffee and continue on with the shining i will update you later tonight that's it for my update i will talk to you very soon bye hello okay i have my starbucks i ordered a tall but they gave me a grande and i'm seeing it as fate because i do need to stay up tonight i went down to the lobby and i was actually just gonna like read down there but it is so busy there were like no seats available anywhere in the lobby which is saying something because there are so many different places to sit but it is also kind of like dinner time it's like 5 30 6 p.m now i just figured i would read in my room for a couple of hours and then when it maybe dies down a little bit maybe around eight o'clock or nine i'm gonna go downstairs and i think i might do what i did last night because it was really fun i think i'm gonna order a cherry coke and kind of like hang out in some of their comfy furniture and read more and then maybe when it gets a little bit later we'll do some exploring around the hotel and that'll be really fun i'm in my stephen king nice comfy t-shirt i've got my book i'm all set so let's go ahead and pick back up where we left off in the shining hello friends it is officially 8 08 p.m this is around the time last night when I went down to the lobby and I could finally find like a nice place to sit and I got like a coke and some french fries and it was so much fun and so I think I want to do that again tonight I don't know if I'm gonna get french fries the phone in my room does keep going off do you hear this it has not gone off at all today aside from like early this morning when i was highlighting in my book i've been in my room quite a bit like off and on all day and i have not heard the phone go off once 
I don't, can you even hear it? Like it continuously is going off. I don't know if you can hear it. There's no reason though. The phone is not dying. Like nothing is wrong with the phone and it's been in the exact same position all day long. I have no idea why it's making that noise. Do you hear that? And it's never happened to me in any other hotel, which I think is so cool and also interesting, but okay. Okay, <laughs> fun fact, I am actually petrified in this clip. You cannot tell. And the reason you cannot tell is because I 100% believe that there was a ghost. One thing that I'm not showing on camera is that all of the hairs on my arm and the back of my neck are fully standing up and I am all of a sudden freezing cold. On the off chance that we really do need to call the Ghostbusters, I am zipping it because I genuinely don't wanna show fear in case this is not a friendly ghost. I think that it was a friendly ghost and I truly believe that there really was a ghost in this room, but I am downplaying it so much in these clips because I, I can't explain it. I'm like petrified and I'm really trying to not show how scared I am. So a little bit of an update on my Stephen King. I am not quite halfway, but I'm past 300 pages. I know, it is quite impressive, isn't it? I will say this, getting progressively more intense, like nothing scary yet, but just Jack, the father, is getting more and more angry at little things. Yeah, and like, it's weird, it's weird. You just kind of wanna be like, Jack, bro, it's not that deep. Maybe we just like take a deep breath and we go get a cherry Coke, you know what I mean? He is kind of freaking out over these things and it's almost like he's self-sabotaging himself. And there's this passage in the book where like he says, maybe I wanna get fired so that we don't have to stay here. Like I think he kind of senses that the Overlook Hotel is just like a little bit more dark than he thought it was. Which is by the way, not how I feel about the Reed Hotel. I love it. It's, I mean, it is a little bit, yes, it is a little bit spooky, but like spooky in kind of like a cool way. Like. It's like a cozy, nice experience. I really like it a lot. It's definitely adding to the atmosphere of the book though, being in the hotel, that is for sure. And I will say that the book is getting progressively more and more scary. So, <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a nice, cozy, comfy sweatshirt and see if I can find a cherry Coke to drink because I really want a cherry Coke. Last night was so fun. And I'm gonna continue reading The Shining and then I will catch up with you in just a little bit. Okay, bye. Hello, I have changed outfits for like the millionth time because I felt like a t-shirt wasn't appropriate because I'm kind of going to a restaurant. But like while I was in my room, I will say the phone, it would not stop going off, which is so weird because it has not done that all day. Maybe I should try the ghost radar in my room. I don't know. I am not even kidding you. Best cherry coke ever. So good. So good. Hello friends, a little bit of an update, although I don't know, I might get copy right for the music, but I am at, I'm almost at part five, 424, and this book is scary. <laughs> this book is really scary. It's starting to get pretty scary. So I might take a break just for a little bit. It's very late. It's officially 11 p.m. So I thought maybe we'd go upstairs and see if any of the apps that I downloaded actually work and a ghost will talk to us, so. Let's do that. Hello besties. So downstairs, I read a really, really good portion of this book. I'm now on page 425 and it's so late. I think I'm actually gonna wake up kind of early tomorrow and maybe try to read a little bit more before I leave, but like I'm really tired so I don't think I can read anymore tonight. I will say that now that a lot of the intrigue about the characters is over and we're getting more into like the actual scary territory of this book. I'm not enjoying it as much. I'm just being honest, like it's well written, but okay. So let me kind of explain, I think what the book is doing really, really well. First of all, I think it's actually showing a really interesting descent into madness. I like that we're getting three different perspectives and one of them is from who is definitely gonna be the villain. And we're seeing his general descent into madness and how he's kind of crossing over from logic into general acceptance of the madness. I think it's an interesting perspective to read from. And I think that Stephen King did a pretty good job at making his 
character sympathetic in the beginning. But the truth is, I just don't want to read from a person who like wants to be violent against his wife and child. That's just like not my vibe. It's not interesting for me to read about. Like I just kind of want him to be nice to them because I like his wife and kid. And so I think it's like kind of harder to read. You start by rooting for the main character and then slowly you're just like, wow, I despise you because how could you be mean to your, like, how could you want to be mean to your wife? But it's interesting, like the general descent into madness, I think is like a very interesting concept in this book. Obviously it's fiction. Obviously like this is not a good representation of like mental health or anything like that. So that's not what I'm saying. It's, it's fiction and it's horror, but the book itself I think presents the characters in a really interesting way. I am so invested and interested in Danny and also in the mom a lot. I'm super, super interested in them as characters. I almost wish that we had a whole story about Danny exploring like the shining in him, but in a way that's different than this, like still could be horror. I think that the reason this is truly like terrifying is not because of the hotel that it takes place at, but because what's more terrifying than your parent or your parents who you're supposed to feel the most safe with being the people who are the most untrustworthy, right? Because like that's your foundation. If it's you and your parents against the monsters, then it's not as scary because you've got your mom and dad by your side. They are the ones who are going to find the monsters under the bed. But if the monster is not under the bed, if the monster is a parent, there's nothing more terrifying than that. And I think that that is a really interesting thing to explore. And I think that is the true horror of the book. It's not the hotel. It's the concept that the person you're supposed to be able to trust the most is the monster and it's a very interesting and complex topic but it's heartbreaking because Danny is five. He is a little precious angel baby who you desperately want to protect. I think because of that it's harder to read because like I don't want anything to happen to this kid and this kid is already going through it and then like also he's talking about his wife and I'm just like you don't respect your wife. Disgusting. As far as intrigue and interest in writing a plus but now we're going more into the really dark thoughts of Jack and the more I hear about him and his disregard and like hate for his wife and how close he is to turning on his son the more I just like don't want to read because I don't want to read from his perspective it is scary but the main reason is just because it's unlikable those are my thoughts I will say though it is a scary book like I think that the book is scary now let's talk a little bit about some ghosts before I left the phone in my room was like ringing a bunch I thought this was just like a common thing and maybe like it meant that the phone battery needed to be charged or put back in a different way or something like that. So I went down to the desk just to see if like I needed to adjust it. And the manager was like, no, we've never had anybody complain about the phones before. But like the phone in my room was going off so much. So if there's a ghost in here, hello, I'm friendly, I promise. <laughs> I just thought that was really interesting. He apparently was like, I'll send somebody up and I was like, oh no, it's not necessary, it's fine. He was like, well, if there's something wrong with the phone, like we'll fix it. And I was like, well, okay. So hopefully if there really was a ghost in my room, oh, I hope that didn't like upset the ghost because I didn't request that. I thought I was doing something with the phone and I just needed to like hang it a certain way or something like that. And then I felt like it would be rude to be like, oh no, you don't have to worry about that. Cause he was like very adamant about it. He was really nice, but apparently that is not a common thing. Apparently he's never heard that there has been anything with the phones, which I think is really fascinating. I do have like apps that you can like ghost detect with, but I tried using them. I did not understand them. I don't think mine work. It was really funny because there was one that was like danger, but like that was when I tripped on the stairs. And so I think it was more just being like, yo, you're clumsy. You guys, I don't know what any of this means. I don't, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, danger because I don't. But anyways, I think that's it for my update for tonight. I will see you tomorrow and we will continue on in our reading journey. Good night. Hello everyone. So it's been a couple days now since I've been back from the hotel and since I have finished reading The Shining by Stephen King, I would love to give you my overall rating for this book. And then also we need to talk about some ghosts. Let's go ahead and start with the review for this book. I love this book. I am 100% shocked at how much I loved this book. I think if I was giving it my personal rating, I would probably give it a 4.5, but I think objectively the book is a solid 5.5. 
five out of five stars. Now, the reason I am giving it a 4.5 is because of sort of the reason that I was saying in the vlog, and that is I didn't personally enjoy reading from Jack's perspective. Jack is the villain, and Jack is so disgusting in the language that he uses about his wife and about his blatant disregard for if he hurts physically his five-year-old child. Now, I don't actually think this is bad writing. In fact, I actually thought that this was really clever because Stephen King is actually showing us his descent into madness. In the very beginning, this is not what Jack is thinking. Jack has a very clear head and without giving too much away, a lot of the hotel really starts to seep into Jack's subconscious. Watching his descent and watching the change and how drastically he becomes almost intertwined with the energy of the hotel is really crucial and important to the overall arc of his character development as well as like understanding why he does some of the things that he does. But I personally hated reading that. I love reading horror when it's like your favorite characters all banding together and going after the bad guy. That's one of the reasons why Stranger Things is one of my very favorite TV shows of all time because it's terrifying, but it's like best friends banding together to save the world and to save each other. And that is so cool to me. So reading about a parent who sucks to his family, I didn't personally enjoy, but I also thought that it was necessary in a lot of ways to the book. I would also say that I was just shocked at how much I loved Stephen King's writing. He wasn't necessarily super lyrical, but some of his phrases that he used in here were so beautiful. And I was really, really not expecting that. I would also say that he could do a masterclass in character development, dialogue, and also suspense and anticipation. I was fully hooked the entire time. I've heard that The Shining is actually kind of slow and I fully disagree. My attention was completely captured the entire entire time I was reading this. And I really, really enjoyed the pacing, the character development. I loved like the paranormal aspects. I thought that the hotel was so incredibly interesting. The scare factor is obviously gonna be a 10 out of 10 for me. Like this was very scary. A couple people were like, don't worry, The Shining isn't that scary. And you lied because this was so scary. I would also say that I'm so glad I decided to read this for the first time in the Reed Hotel without giving away too many things about the hotel in this book because I really feel like you should go into the story if you want to read it, not knowing a lot about the hotel. One thing that is in the hotel that I really enjoyed and I'll be brief on is that there is a 1920s party going on in parts of the hotel. It turns very sinister very quickly. It made the book so much more scary reading this in the lobby with a waitress who was fully decked out in a flapper's beautiful dress while jazz music played in this gorgeous setting that looked like I had just stepped into The Great Gatsby. It 100% made my entire experience reading this so much scarier and I really, really enjoyed it. I will just say trigger warnings because I don't know when the book was written. I think that Stephen King wrote this in the 70s. However, just a trigger warning, the language in here is definitely outdated. So if you're going into this and you're sensitive to that, you might wanna skip it. I was a little bit surprised in reading some of the language. I loved all the characters. Danny was obviously my favorite, but I loved Wendy as well. I thought it was great. I especially loved it because I love reading fantasy and this had some really fantastical paranormal elements that I just really, really enjoyed. That's my overall rating, 4.5, but objectively it's probably more like a five star and I will definitely be reading more Stephen King in the future. Now let's briefly talk about my experience at the Reed House Hotel. First of all, everything about the hotel was phenomenal, 10 out of 10. Like if you're looking for a fun, beautiful place to stay in Chattanooga, highly recommend it. The staff was incredible, everyone was so kind, everyone was so helpful and it was just honestly one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my whole life and the food was amazing too. Now do I think that the Reed house is haunted? Yes I do. I know that saying that seems kind of weird but you're gonna have to trust me. There were times at the hotel when things just felt sort of off not in a bad way but in a that's weird way. The most obvious one was the fact that my phone in the hotel room kept ringing. I know there are probably a million different reasons. I'm sure somebody at home has a phone like this and they can tell me in the comments the reason why. But when I went downstairs to talk to the concierge, he said that there has never been a complaint about the phone. And I think it would be really weird if I was the only guest who has ever experienced something about the phone, even if it's a common issue. Also, when the phone was going off, I did get full goosebumps and chills and 
and I was really cold and it felt very strange. And then the final thing, I kind of joke about this, but I have like these Ghostbuster little apps, right? I just did that to be kind of silly and to see if anything would happen, not really thinking anything would. However, do you remember the part where I tripped and you can't really see it? I'm gonna see if I can figure out how, but the phone actually spikes up to the word danger as I'm tripping. Oh, jeez. Yeah, danger because I tripped. And I make a joke like, yeah, it says danger because I'm tripping. Well, I'm pretty sure the only reason I was in danger is because I tripped. But actually, it's almost like I was pushed or something. And it was weird because at the time, I was really confused as to why I was tripping because I was going up the stairs and I don't normally trip while I go up the stairs. I trip going down the stairs though. Maybe that's completely in my mind, but I do think it's kind of weird that I tripped right as my little ghost meter said danger and that the phone would not stop going off, but that the people in the lobby had never ever heard of this happening before and there was never ever any complaints about a phone before. I don't know, maybe it's all coincidences, but it's October, so I'm gonna go ahead and say I think it was a ghost. But there you have it, you guys. Those are all of my thoughts on The Shining, and that was my experience at the Reed House in Chattanooga. Definitely something I would categorize as a haunted hotel. But I think that's it. A huge thank you to all of my Patreons over on Fox and Wood. Thank you so much for all of your continued support, and a special thank you to all of the Ink and Quill Club members who are all the executive producers of every single video that I create. I love you guys so much. I will see you very, very soon, and until next time, my lovely friends. Keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye! I know you're just out